Here, we will continue our discussion on common biochemical reactions. We will then learn about phosphoryl group transfers and high energy molecules. Group transfer reactions are inseparable part of biochemical pathways. Proton transfer is very common. As you may know, in enzyme active sites, proton transfer happens freely. Methyl transfer. Methyl transfer involves transfer of a methyl from a cofactor to a substrate. And this is usually catalyzed by enzymes. Methylation of proteins and DNA happens all the time. Acyl transfer. Acyl transfer reactions are pretty common and one of the most common acyl transfer reactions happens during biosynthesis of fatty acids. Glycosyl transfer. This involves transfer of a sugar molecule and it is usually catalyzed by enzymes. Phosphoryl transfer. Phosphoryl transfer usually happens and is catalyzed by enzymes called as kinases. And this is done on proteins and also on small molecules or metabolites. And this is usually done to activate metabolites and also is an important part of signal transduction. Substitution from the sp3 hybridized phosphorus in a phosphoryl transfer reaction proceeds via nucleophilic substitution, which is usually associated an SN2-like mechanism. The nucleophile forms a partial bond to the phosphorus center, giving a pentacovalent intermediate or a pentacoordinated transition state. And this is how it looks like. And if this were to be the center, electrophilic center, where a nucleophile, such as an alcohol, Z is equal to ROH, attacks the phosphorus center. And if W is the leaving group, such as ADP, and what essentially happens is it goes via a pentacoordinated uh, transition state. ATP is frequently the donor of the phosphate in the biosynthesis of phosphate esters, which involves phosphoryl group transfer. In this case, if you look at this reaction that is catalyzed uh, by an enzyme, wherein a glucose attacks this phosphoryl center of ATP, and this phosphate leaves from ATP to release ADP. And the phosphate is now stuck on glucose. And this is a characteristic phosphoryl transfer reaction. Hydrolysis of ATP is highly favorable under standard conditions. That is because of three reasons. One, there is better charge separation in products. Phosphate or ADP, either of them there is much better charge separation. Second, better solvation of products. Phosphate or ADP are better solvated as compared to ATP. Third reason is because there is more favorable resonance stabilization of the products. As compared to ATP, the phosphate has more resonance forms as shown here and ADP has more resonance form than ATP. Now, the free energy change for ATP hydrolysis is minus 30.5 kilojoules per moles under standard conditions. But the actual free energy of hydrolysis, which is the delta G of ATP in living cells is very different. And that depends on the cellular concentrations of ATP, ADP, 
phosphate, which is uh, present as this phosphate. Magnesium in the cytosol binds to ATP and ADP, and for most enzymatic reactions that involve ATP as phosphoryl group donor, the true substrate is MgATP. The relevant standard free energy change is therefore that of MgATP hydrolysis to MgADP. Therefore, reiterating what I just said, the actual free energy change in a process depends on the standard free energy, the actual concentration of reactants and products. The free energy change is more favorable if the reactant's concentration exceeds its equilibrium concentration. The true reactant and the product are magnesium ATP and magnesium ADP respectively. The standard free energy change also is magnesium dependent. Hence, the actual free energy change is equal to a sum of standard free energy change plus RT LN concentration of magnesium ADP times phosphate divided by the concentration of magnesium ATP. Let us consider a problem here. From the data given in this table, let us calculate the delta G of ATP hydrolysis in rat hepatocytes at 37 degrees centigrade. Now, if we consider this equation, delta G P, which is the phosphorylation potential, or the total free energy change of ATP hydrolysis, which is a combination of the standard free energy change and RTLN concentrations of ADP, PI, and ATP, which is shown in this expression. If you substitute for the standard free energy change, which is minus 30.5 kilojoules per moles, and at standard conditions, the universal gas constant and temperature, which is 37 degrees centigrade, and then substitute for the concentrations for rat hepatocyte, that is ATP is 3.38, ADP is 1.32, and phosphate is 4.8. And this is all in millimolar. And you would get a constant uh, uh, delta G value of minus 46.7 kilojoules per moles. So cellular ATP concentrations is usually far above equilibrium concentrations, making ATP a very important source of chemical energy. Besides ATP, there are other phosphorylated compounds that have large delta G0 for hydrolysis. For example, phosphoenol pyruvate, or PEP, the hydrolysis of which has a very large standard free energy change. Even larger than ATP, as you can see, it's minus 61.9 kilojoules per moles. And why is this? It is, again, because of electrostatic repulsion within the reactant molecule that gets relieved as a result of hydrolysis. The product, phosphate, is stabilized via resonance and uh, gets solvated much more than the substrate or the reactant. The other product, pyruvate, that comes from phosphoenol pyruvate, undergoes tautomerization. Pyruvate as such is in enol form here, and it can go to keto form, and it can constantly interchange between these two forms. And these are the driving forces for the hydrolysis of phosphoenol pyruvate. The ATP hydrolysis reactions that we just saw is not just a simple hydrolysis. What I meant to say is in this case, ATP doesn't just get hydrolyzed by water to ADP and PI. 
what actually happens is ATP is involved in group transfer reactions. In this case, uh, glutamate is converted to glutamine in presence of an enzyme, and ammonia is being used when this oxygen is replaced by NH2. Now, to facilitate this reaction from happening, coupling of ATP hydrolysis to ADP drives the reaction forward. So, throughout our next three chapters, we might see ATP being used in many different reactions and reactions that are written in one step. But in truth, or actually what is happening is a two-step reaction. The first step is activation of this carboxylate by attacking ATP or attaching ATP and transferring a phosphate from ATP to this carboxylate. As a result, this carboxyphosphate compound forms, and then ammonia attacks this carbonyl carbon, which is now activated, thereby releasing phosphate, resulting in glutamine. So, in principle, ATP is facilitating a chemical reaction by making the substrate to have a better leaving group and the thermodynamics that follows this follows this is what drives the reaction this graph here shows ranking of biological phosphate compounds by standard free energy of hydrolysis as you can see on this axis what this shows is the flow of flow of phosphoryl groups represented by P and a circle from high energy phosphoryl group donors like phosphoenol pyruvate via ATP that is shown here to acceptor molecules such as glucose and glycerol to form their low energy phosphate derivatives such as glucose 6-phosphate or glycerol 6 glycerol 3 phosphate now the location of each compound's donor phosphate group along the scale is an approximate indication of the compound's standard free energy change of hydrolysis now this flow of phosphoryl groups catalyzed by enzymes like kinases proceeds with an overall loss of free energy under intracellular conditions. Hydrolysis of low energy phosphate compounds such as glucose 6-phosphate or glycerol 3-phosphate releases phosphate which has an even lower phosphoryl group transfer potential. Hydrolysis of thioesters is strongly favorable. For example, hydrolysis of acetyl-CoA is a favorable process. Acetyl-CoA, as you can see here, the structure, this is a CoA molecule, coenzyme A. We looked at the structure in the previous chapter. But it attaches, it has a cyst, it has, it has a thiol, and uh, this thiol is usually the carrier of acetyl groups, and hence acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is an important donor of acyl groups feeding two carbon units, one, two, into metabolic pathways. And one of the most important function is the synthesis of fatty acids. And when you look at the hydrolysis of acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA hydrolyzes to acetic acid, which then ionizes to form acetate, which is, which is stabilized by resonance. The hydrolysis of acetyl-CoA gives a standard free energy of minus 31.4 kilojoules per moles. In acyl transfers, molecules other than water accept the acyl group, which means that in this case, water doesn't accept, but other molecules accept the acyl group. 